One of the earliest examples of how crazy yet intelligent we bronies are was a college presentation where a student delved into the physics of Equestria, showing off how three scenes from season one were impossible, unless all ponies are made of dark matter. Among them was his dissection of the sonic rain boom, which is mostly what helped him achieve notoriety, even being used in research for death battle. By calculations according to this guy, Rainbow Dash can fly five times the speed of sound with ease. Now, years later, we here at the lab are taking our own stab at this phenomenon. Not to prove its impossibility, but rather to take everything at face value and determine exactly what it is, and how it can propel Rainbow Dash into being the fastest thing alive! First off, let's borrow some information from that physics presentation. Ignoring the fact that this all should not be able to happen, and instead assuming that, in Equestria, Pegasus ponies are just that resistant to insane acceleration levels and suddenly going over 11 Gs, Rainbow Dash is going well over 1500 meters per second, with an acceleration of 109 meters per second squared. Now, the student did this episode before the Season 2 finale, so he could not have factored this in, but now, let's look at the second part of a Canterlot wedding. Near the end, Rainbow Dash performs another sonic rain boom, and this time going straight up, against gravity rather than having it assist her. Not to mention she does so with next to no effort, and with maybe two seconds of acceleration. Hold on a moment. Does anyone else see this? After the rain boom, Rainbow's speed doesn't change? And she still has the mock cone around her, unlike in Sonic Rain Boom where it vanished after she hit the rain boom? Weird, don't you think? And what about the rain nuke in Lesson Zero? She hits the rain boom right as she hits the barn, but had no visible cone the whole time. What's going on here? Here's what I've deduced. There is not just one sonic rain boom. There are multiple types of rain booms, achieved through different speeds and circumstances. The one Rainbow pulled off for the wedding was slower because the focus was aesthetic and visual pleasure, not speed. Therefore, it was much easier to do. However, the ones in Sonic Rain Boom and Cutie Mark Chronicles were for the sake of speed, and actually were entirely accidental. And the Rain Nuke in Lesson Zero... Well, assuming that even was from a Sonic Rain Boom, she likely just timed the Rain Boom to occur right as she hit the barn, which is what caused the explosion. But as we all likely know, the Sonic Rain Boom everyone knows of is the one from the episode of the same name. So for the sake of simplicity, that's the one we'll be examining throughout this episode. Now that we've recapped from the student's presentation, let's look into some new questions. For example, how does a Sonic Rain Boom work? Well, first off, contrary to popular belief, Rainbow Dash does not travel at the speed of light when she uses it. The speed of light is over 670 million miles per hour, and if you were to travel at the speed of light, and somehow survive, you could go around the planet Earth about seven and a half times in one second. Rainbow may have been going fast, but even immediately after hitting the rain boom, she doesn't even get to the ground in a single second. And before you suggest that the scene was just slowed down, Fluttershy manages to cheer for Rainbow Dash before she even gets to rarity, and yelling all that would take well over the time it'd take for Rainbow to hit the ground. So no, she isn't traveling at light speed. But she does manage to shatter the visible light spectrum somehow, creating a big rainbow ring and trail. Or... no, she doesn't. Remember back in Boastbusters when Rainbow gathered condensation from clouds on the sky so that when she landed the drops of water formed a rainbow? As we all know, rainbows come from raindrops reflecting sunlight. So what if, by flying so fast, Rainbow was actually collecting condensation from the air around her? And when she hit top speed, the water flew off and behind her, as well as around her in a ring that went outward, and when the sunlight reflected off of it, it created the rainbow effect we see. I mean, sure, I doubt in reality you could make a rainbow that big from just water molecules pulled out of the air, but since this is a cartoon, they likely had to make it a lot more obvious what was going on. So how about that? The amazing light show produced by the rain boom is nothing more than droplets of water being flung outwards by a sudden burst of speed, which occurs when Rainbow breaks past the sound barrier and wind resistance using a combination of acceleration and Pegasus magic. So actually, whenever you get mad at someone for their character being a Mary Sue because they can pull off their own personalized sonic rain boom, it's actually entirely possible for them to do. But if they haven't gone through some sort of major flight training and don't have racing as a special talent like Rainbow Dash does, yeah, that's bull. And yes, it should be noted that when Rainbow pulls off the Rain Boom in Kingdom Hearts Chronicles, the Ring of Wind is strong enough to shatter rock miles away and can be seen pretty much all over Equestria. How does that work? To be frank, we don't know. 
Perhaps that'll be the topic of a future episode, but for now, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. See you next time, viewers, when we begin explaining every other instance of Pegasus magic at work. Nah, just kidding. Or am I?